Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun -so, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, good afternoon. Thank you, as always, for coming on the program. Happy to be here. Well, let's start with stocks in the U.S. So we're getting mixed messages to a degree from top officials at the Fed, one who says interest rates need to be much higher, and another who recently said it might soon be time to back off. And the main indices closed higher last Friday for the session, but a lot of the big names, especially tech, were lower for the week. What's the story in the global equity markets ahead of Monday's open? Okay, well, Friday by itself, the market was slightly up, Dow by 0.6%, S&P by 0.3%, and NASDAQ 0.01%. For the week, the three indicators were down, Dow by minus 0.01%, S&P by minus 0.7%, and NASDAQ by minus 1.6%. But then go for the last 30 days and markets are up. Uh, so we're really having a bit of a uh, roller coaster time on the uh, U.S. market. Year to date, Dow is down 7.8 percent. S&P is down by 17.3 percent. And NASDAQ is down by about 30 percent. Uh, this week, it's a historically quiet week. It's a short week because Thanksgiving trading will only take place from Monday to Wednesday. But there is a lot of uh, earnings, retail earning reports that are coming out from companies like Best Buy, Nordstrom. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods and Dollar Tree. And there's also a flurry of economic reports, including durable goods, home sales, unemployment claims, and consumer sentiments, as well as the uh, minutes from the uh, last Federal Reserve meeting. Asian markets, uh, the on Friday, Nikkei, Shanghai, and Hang Seng were all down. Uh, uh, today, they're uh, VK is slightly up, but the uh, Chinese markets are down. Hang Seng fell more than 2% due to uh, corona uh, virus fears. Uh, th there had been three deaths, uh, first deaths since the uh, Shanghai lockdown. All three of these people had pre existing conditions and were over 85 years of age, but it's still making the markets very nervous. Uh, Japan, we had, they had the uh, inflation numbers coming out uh, la late last week. It had the highest core inflation in 40 years uh, for all items. Uh, the inflation was 3.7% over 12 months. Uh, if you take core inflation, uh, excluding uh, fresh food and energy, though, it was about 2.9%. Just for the month, core inflation, uh, that is without uh, food and energy, uh, for the uh, just the month of October, uh, October, it was 0.6%, uh, so their inflation seems to be accelerating. Uh, their uh, September monthly inflation was 0.3%. A lot of the inflation in Japan was driven by uh, the weaker yen. They figured that the energy costs went up by 15.2%, not because of the uh, global oil prices going up, but because of uh, the Japanese yen value falling down. Uh, European markets uh, on Friday, they were doing uh, fairly well. Uh, all uh, DAX, FTSE, and CAC were in the uh, plus range. Uh, the uh, European markets have just started to uh, trade, but FTSE is up today. Uh, oil prices, they seem to be holding stable, going down a little bit. The uh, West Texas Intermediate is now $80, uh, about $80 per barrel. That is considerably lower than it was just last week. Natural gas is slightly up at uh, $6.30 for a million BTUs. Well, Professor, if we could go back to this issue of the uh, the Fed and this idea that it needs to raise uh, rates to 5 or even 7 percent, as the St. Louis Fed president, I believe, uh, James Bullard said, then the Atlanta Fed president saying over the weekend uh, the opposite. So what is he happening with interest rates? Okay, well, uh, the uh, James Bullard of the St. Louis Fed is a... Uh, the, uh, very uh, hawkish uh, of the hawks, uh, and he has calculated these figures from what is called a Taylor Rule. Taylor Rule is a rule devised by uh, economists, Stanford uh, University economist John Taylor around 1993, and originally it looked at how the Fed decide, decided interest rates. Now, the uh, Taylor Rule says that you can get a fairly accurate reading of uh, the uh, Fed's interest rate uh, by by the following equation. You start with the equilibrium interest rate, that is the uh, neutral rate of interest, and then plus one half the output gap, where how much GDP falls from full employment, uh, plus one half uh, multiplied 
by the uh, inflation gap. That is uh, how much the inflation differs from the 2% target range. Now, the Taylor rule was supposed to look at how the Fed makes its decisions, but somehow over time it got the interpretation of that rule changed a little bit to where the Fed should put the uh, interest rate. Uh, It's not entirely clear if the uh, Taylor rule is the optimal rule for setting the uh, interest rate, but in this case, uh, the uh, James Bullard used the Taylor rule under various assumptions to come up with where the interest rate should be, and his uh, calculations show that under optimistic scenario it was around 5%. Under the pessimistic scenario, it could go as high as 7%, and that is why the market is spooked. Uh, should the Fed act according to the Taylor rule? Well, the Taylor rule provides some transparency rules over discretion, but the case is not that clear. Uh, the economists uh, believe that the uh, interest rate uh, should go higher, but how much higher it's still up to debate. Inflation seems to be uh, have uh, seems to have reached a peak. Food and energy prices are dropping. Uh, the inflationary expectation, well, the evidence on that is mixed. Uh, the uh, various surveys say that the uh, inflation expectation uh, for the uh, United States by, uh, by consumers is not that high over the uh, long run, uh, but wage increases are high in the 5% range. Uh, that is less than the inflation rate, but it is more than where it should be. Uh, by the uh, Fed's uh, 2% inflation target. Uh, Core inflation, again, is still fairly high, but the uh, core producer's price index over uh, the month of October was only 0.2%, which is about 2.4% annualized. Uh, So uh, there seems to be a uh, differing opinions between hawks and doves in the Fed. Uh, The Uh, Now, both hawks and doves have agreed fairly fairly much uh, over this year, and they also agree that there should be uh, increases during December and early part of next year. Where they differ, though, is where where should the uh, U.S. go afterwards? The hawks uh, definitely uh, want an interest rate that's higher than 5.5%. The doves, uh, they want an interest rate that's perhaps around or lower than 5.5%. Uh, and they're uh, right now lining up on both sides. So we're probably going to have more disagreements between the hawks and the doves uh, in the upcoming months. But at least things seem to be clear until uh, first quarter of next year, which is that the interest rate will keep on rising and it'll go up to perhaps 5% uh, by sometime uh, in the first quarter of next year. Right. And, uh, Professor, almost out of time, uh, but we're uh, seeing the dollar gain back some strength. uh, But uh, that's uh, brought the exchange rates uh, back up here for Korea and the local stock market down a fair bit today as well. Uh, Take us through the domestic market, Professor. Okay. Well, Cosby lost 1.56 percent last week. Close back by about zero, uh, gained about uh, 0.1 percent last week. Uh, Cosby ended today at 2419.44, lost about 1 percent. Close back ended today at 718.65, it lost about 1.8 percent. Year to date, Cosby is down about 19.3 percent. Kostak is down by 30.8 percent. Uh, Korean won it lost 15 won today, ended at 13. 15- 58.00. One month depreciation for Korean won. Uh, well, one month appre- appreciation. Gain in value of the Korean won was uh, 4.98 percent. But year to date depreciation of the Korean won is 14.22 percent. And uh, it seems that the uh, because of the interest rate differentials and probably a continuing trade deficit, we are going to see. Uh, continual weakening of the yuan until the end of the year. Luckily, though, uh, it made a big adjustment from the 1400s to 1300s. So perhaps it will not go uh, go up to about 1500 as uh, some have feared, but it will probably still uh, weaken from this point onward to the end of the year. All right, we'll keep an eye on that, Professor. Uh, thank you as always for coming on the program. Really appreciate your insights. Thank you.